Hey, how's it going everybody? My name's Tony and I want to teach you how to design t-shirts and other things from home even if you have zero design experience. Today we're going to take the design that we made in the second part of this series and sublimate it on a raglan t-shirt. So the shirt we're using here is this next level and it's got the colored sleeves and the white heather body. So in order to sublimate on a t-shirt it needs to contain polyester it should be a hundred percent polyester to get the best results uh, this one's 50 percent poly 25 percent cotton and 25 percent rayon i think and so this is going to give us a more faded look than on a regular 100 percent poly t-shirt but the advantage of this shirt here is that it's very soft it feels really nice to wear and it looks a little more fashionable i think so what we're going to do is we're going to customize our design then we're going to send it to our printer and then we're going to put it on the heat press and press up the design then we'll ship it and send it to the customer so let's just jump right into illustrator and get started we're in illustrator and we've opened our pre-made design and all we need to do is add the information and then we can send it to our sublimation printer. So I've copied and pasted everything from my Etsy order to here. And we'll start with the name. We're just going to change this from Tony's to Rob. Now I like for this design to extend to from the end of this F to the end of this A, the all the type. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to resize this and I'm holding down option and shift. Remember shift keeps it from distorting and then option just makes it go from the middle out. I'm going to make that here. And now you'll notice that it's bigger than our panel here. So I'm just going to move this out of the way for now. I'm going to use my direct selection tool. I'm going to select all of these uh, anchor points. So just click and drag across the top here. Now I'm going to switch to my selection tool and then it's going to give me this little handle to grab right there. So I'm just going to do that and move that up. And I'm going to grab this handle and just move that down. I'll move that type back up, hold down shift so it constrains to this one area so it's not moving all over the place. It'll stay centered. Move that where I want it. Now I'm going to use the direct selection tool again here, select all of this. And actually what I could do is I can just click on one of these anchor points and then hold down shift and move that down like that. And that looks about good to me. The year we can change this to 2020 and now on something like this where there's a city and sometimes even a name where it's a little bit unusual or something that I'm not quite positive or confident in getting right every time because it's very easy to you know add an extra character or have things out of order when it's something you're not super familiar with so what I'll do there is I'll copy and paste that usually from um, from Etsy because one, if I copy and paste it from here it's going to change the typeface to whatever I typed it in here. So I'll go into my Etsy first and then paste it. Now you'll notice that I had everything all caps and now this is upper and lower case because that's the way they typed it. So I can just select that and I can go to type, change case, uppercase. And now it'll make everything uppercase. Okay, so now this design is personalized and you can see that it took, you know, a minute to do. And that's with me explaining what I'm doing. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. So I select everything. I can either push control A to select all or I can use the direct selection tool and just click and drag across the entire design. 
then control C, command C if you're on Mac to copy. Or you can go here, edit, copy. Now what I'm gonna do is I've gone into Photoshop and I made a 13 by 19 canvas because that's the size of my paper that I'm using. 300 DPI and I'm just gonna paste my image in here. So I go edit, paste, or control V, command V on Mac. And then I wanna do this as a smart object. So what the smart object's gonna do is it's going to retain all the information from the vector file. If I'm just pasted this as pixels, it's gonna degrade in quality as it gets larger. So once I do that, I'm gonna click and drag this. Now in the newer versions of Photoshop, it automatically constrains the proportions for you. In the old ones, it didn't. And you had to do the same thing as Illustrator where you hold down Shift. And then I'm gonna make this, this is going on a large shirt, so we'll make this about 10 inches wide. I'll make it a little bit smaller, like 9.75-ish. And okay, we'll paste this, place this where we want it. And if I turned off the background, you'll see it, all the parts of my designs that were transparent in Illustrator will be transparent. All the parts that had white will stay white. It's not gonna matter for this because it's going on white paper. So once I do that, I can print it. I'll just go here to print. You need to find the printer you wanna send it to, how many copies, and then I can go to my print settings select one of my presets and your printer and your ink is going to be might be different so you have to see what your ink manufacturer recommends for your settings there might be a profile you can put in there uh, this one it's not really going to matter because it's just black and white so i'm picking my sublimation preset and it's feeding from the paper cassette I have my document size here. I can pick a different type of paper. If I'm using premium presentation mat, I can change the quality. And then there's also mirroring and high speed printing options too. So once I have everything the way that I need it, I push okay. Then this should reflect those changes. So now I can see my entire image in the artboard. I hit the print button and that this it'll give me this warning but I'm not printing to the edges anyways. Proceed so this is getting sent to my printer and now we can go grab this out of the printer and put it on our shirt. Okay so here we are at our printer. We have our sublimation print. It's printed on a special paper that will allow the ink to release with the heat that uses special sublimation inks also. This printer here is an Epson Workforce 7710 and it's a relatively inexpensive printer and it prints up to 13 by 19 and I was able to buy third-party inks for pretty cheap too. I've used more expensive printers in the past and for what I do it's kind of cost prohibitive so this was perfect. This one requires a little more care than using something like a sawgrass but if you're just starting and you just want to jump into it, the Epson printers are great for that. You just have to be prepared to do a little tinkering and um, clean the ink heads and stuff every now and then. So anyways, we're going to take our print and we're going to jump over to the heat press and press this up. Okay, so here we are at our heat press. We have our heat set to 400 degrees, which is what the ink requires to release. And what we're going to do is we're going to give it a quick pre-press here for 10 seconds. So I'm just going to line this thing up on the platen here and try to get it as straight as I possibly can. So when I put my design down, it's a little bit easier to line up and hopefully it comes out as straight as possible. So once I have this about where I like it, I'm just going to close this and give it a press for 10 seconds. And this is just going to release whatever moisture is in the shirt if there's any. And it'll give me a nice smooth surface to work with too. All right, so now that that's done, I'm gonna grab my print. Okay, now when I get my print, what I like to do here is just fold it in half and I can see through the paper if I hold it up to the light. 
and just give it a nice little fold right down the center, just kind of on the top and bottom. And that way I can line it up with the lowest point of the collar here. So I'm just gonna line this up the best I can. It doesn't need to be perfect, but it should be relatively straight. And we wanna go about three fingers or more down, three to four fingers down from the collar. This is kind of a big design, so I don't wanna to go too low, but that's about good. I can hold my shirt out here and just see how it looks. It looks fairly straight and centered to me. So the next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna get some of this thermal tape. I'm just gonna tape it down right here and give myself a little courtesy tab. I'm just gonna fold it back on itself so it makes it a little easier to peel up. And I'm gonna put a little bit of tape here. And one more step that we need to do here actually before we do this is we need to get some paper to put in the middle of the shirt. Okay, so I have a sheet of 13 by 19 copy paper. This is just regular 20 pound bond. And what I'm gonna do here is put it between the layers of the shirt and that's gonna help prevent this design from bleeding through. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna heat it up. It's gonna release the vapor and if I don't have something here to block it, it will dye the back part of the shirt too. And I'll have to, I would have to reprint it if that happened because I can't send a shirt out that has a print going all the way through. Okay, so now that's there. And then I'm gonna do one more step here. I'm gonna get another sheet of paper and I'm gonna put it on top. Now what this is gonna do is again, the vapor is going to dye the shirt, but the vapor is also going to release upwards onto the top platen. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to set this to 55 seconds, and my pressure is pretty light. Um, I have an, a pneumatic heat press, and so I can dial in the exact pounds per square inch. This is about 35. So we're going to just press this up for 55 seconds. Okay, 55 seconds have elapsed. We're gonna peel this off. And now we have our design. And I don't know if I mentioned this before, but the tape basically just keeps this paper from moving when the press lifts up and making a ghost image on there. So we can take this paper out from the middle and I don't know how well you could see it, but you can see there's an image that's ghosted onto this paper. And like I said, if this paper wasn't there, it would have just printed right through the shirt and you would have seen a ghost image on the back of the shirt. So now all I need to do with this is fold it up. Is I'm just gonna fold it, put it in a, a poly bag and, and mail it. And that's how you make a sublimation shirt. And I know I've mentioned this before on one of the other videos, but this is about $15 of profit. So it's pretty easy to do. You just need a little bit of equipment and that's gonna be somewhat of a cost. You don't need a super expensive heat press like I have. There's a lot of heat presses you can get for a few hundred bucks and they'll do you just fine, especially if you're starting. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it informative and I really hope that it sparks you to start down your own path of printing your own items, printing your own shirts or mugs or whatever and selling them on their own and becoming your own print on demand fulfiller. I have a Facebook group linked in the description. Please join, please jump in, ask any questions about the printing process, about designing um, for critiques anything you need, any kind of advice. I love helping, I love teaching people, and I love to see people grow. So keep on designing, and I hope to see you on the next one. Thank you.